Well, thank you, Dr. Joseph, for having us and uh, Dean Foster. I think this is a great opportunity, not only for us to showcase what's happening in our countries and in Latin America in particular, but I think it's an outstanding opportunity for you guys because Latin America is what's going to be happening in the next, next 10 years. Uh, it's growing tremendously, all the opportunities that are going there. And there's a lot of countries like uh, Brazil, obviously Me Mexico and, and Colombia that are in a path to becoming uh, developed countries within the next 20 years. So uh, I have a, it's actually a really long presentation. I just wanted to have it as a visual because it shows a tendency. It says a story of what's happening in Colombia. And I see it as a success story because I think it's one of the biggest turnarounds, and it's not because I'm Colombian, but it's one of the biggest turn turnarounds that i ever seen uh, in a long time. I mean, 15 years ago, Colombia was a failed state where headlines out of every newsletter outlet around the world was uh, drug cartels, uh, bombings, uh, an ongoing war with, with guerrillas. 15 years after, we are the third largest economy in Latin America after um, Brazil and Mexico. Uh, we have had the opportunity to reduce the poverty in Colombia from 60% of habitants that were under the poverty line to under 27%. That's a major step into a lot of people who move into the middle class. So I'm gonna try it as brief as possible so I can get a couple of uh, questions at the end of the presentation. And obviously, I, I'm going to be hanging around dur during the break. Unfortunately, I can't stay, but but we can we can definitely discuss any questions you may have during the break. A little bit about what Pro Colombia is. Pro Colombia is basically the name of our trade uh, commission. Uh, we uh, we have tw uh, 25 different offices inside the country, uh, helping companies uh, prepare to different markets on how to export. And we have um, 26 offices throughout the, uh, throughout the, throughout the country in, in, in 30 countries. Uh, these are some of the services. Uh, if you, you want to get a hold of the presentation, ask me at the end, uh, and, and I can definitely tell you a little bit more about that. Um, some interesting facts. Uh, for example, 55% of the population is uh, under 30. So that's a really young population. Um, a little bit of extension in, 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 in terms of the territory. Colombia is positionally, strategically in, in the middle of, of, of the Americas. We are between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, which makes it for a, a tremendous hub if you're gonna use it for uh, exports to, to either Europe or, or Asia. Um, here are some of the economic achievements, for example, in terms of foreign direct investment. In 2000, we had like a billion dollars in foreign direct investment. Uh, up to last, uh, last year, we have in the presentation uh, the three quarters, uh, the first three quarters of the year, uh, $12 billion in foreign direct investment. It actually closed in $14 billion. Um, so here you can see how our strategic location, and this is key because Colombia in the past 10 years went really aggressively to start opening to other markets. Like you've heard uh, many of the challenges that we had uh, initially trying to sign the free trade agreement with the United States, which was signed, uh, it's actually gonna be the, the, the third year uh, anniversary of the free trade agreement. We have free trade agreements with Canada, with Europe, and we have agreements through with all, our, um, with all of our partners in, in, in Latin America. Um, as you can see here, Colombia is uh, now in one of the 30th largest economies in the world. And it's definitely one of the highest growths in Latin America. If you see the, the average growth for Latin America is, um, sorry, it's being covered right here, but it was, almost 2%, and Colombia grew at a 4.8% last year, showing that how that economy keeps going up. Also, we have, we've been able to maintain low inflation. Um, 
unemployment rates going down. We still have a, a really high unemployment rate. One of the reasons that uh, that we have those numbers is one of the challenges that we that the government faces is how do we get people who are doing informal uh, economic activities? How do we make those companies join the system, uh, register, pay their taxes? So those people who are not registered like that, they still consider unemployed. Um, as I was saying, here are some of the tendencies of, on the poverty levels uh, going down, the growth of the middle class. Um, one of, and this is a, an interest, interest anecdote uh, regarding the, the middle class. Um, one of the biggest trends that we've seen, obviously, is a lot more uh, kids are going to, to higher school. They're going to college. We've seen an increase of 45%. But the other thing that we've seen is that what is the first thing that people mostly do when they join the, first, the, the middle class? They buy a pet, whether it's a dog, it's an iguana, or in Colombia's case, probably a tarantula, who knows? <laughs> but, but just to give you an idea, 10 years ago, the, the pet industry was $100 million in Colombia. Last year alone, it was $1.2 billion. So that tells you that all those, all those people are starting to get pets, and, and obviously that's the first way that they want to spend their money. Um, another interesting fact is that uh, 10 years ago, we had an average of 100,000 uh, flights inside Colombia in a month. Now we have uh, passengers, I'm sorry. Now we have an average of a million five passengers a month inside Colombia. So I say, someone is flying. We don't have so much rich people that they're going to keep flying all around in one month. So uh, that, that's all the tendencies that are making it very interesting, especially if you're going to see Colombia as an opportunity to either put an operation there to manufacture and sell to Colombia and then the region, or just to export to Colombia. It's a great market. Um, this is the, the purchasing power you can see here. The, the growth uh, and investor confidence, this is another thing that has grown tremendously. We have been rated by the three major um, um, credit uh, agencies, uh, investment agencies, as investment grade. Uh, Ten years ago, we were like in the blacklist. Now they encourage us to, to, to they encourage investors to look into Colombia, and it's actually one of the top ten places to invest in the world right now. Here are some statistics in terms of uh, uh, some of the FDI destination into Colombia. Uh, United States is the number one investor in the country, followed by China and um, Hong Kong, China, and Brazil. Here are some of the multinationals that we have been able to provide assistance and are working out out of Colombia. Um, we, we, from ProColombia, work really close with companies uh, in help them understand better the, 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 the country, the economics, the political, because obviously there's always a lot of doubt, especially with the different issues that we have around with our neighbors without, without going into details. But it's definitely a lot of um, turmoil that is going in the region that has investors worried. And, and, and I think that Colombia's history speaks for itself on how economically and political stable, even with, with uh, ongoing war that we had uh, with, the, with the cartels back in the time, um, and right now, most of you have heard that uh, Colombia is undergoing a peace negotiation with the FARC, which was the main group, um, rebel group in, in the country. It's been there for 60, 60 years. One of the, uh, I say, one of the nice things that the Cold War left for us. So thank God we're, we're, we're going through that. And we, we're very hopeful that um, that, that peace process is going to be signed soon. And, and that's going to be huge for Colombia. So for those of you who are considering, think about doing a country that 20 years ago was going a drug war and it was going a guerrilla war and all of a sudden it's going to have a signed peace process and we're not going to have a conflict anymore. So those things, considering with the projections that we have economically, make Colombia for a, a, an incredible 
partner and an incredible, incredible place to do business with. Some of the largest Colombian companies that have operations in, in, in the United States that are investing in the United States. This is another step that we're moving forward from, from our agency is we believe that companies from Colombia, in order to move into the next level, they have to go internationally. They have to start putting operations in those countries, whether it's for logistics, uh, partially manufacture, but if you want to be a world player, you have to be in different uh, areas. Okay. Uh, here you can see the, the growth um, on the exports. Uh, obviously, a big jump since the, um, the obviously, the, the, the countries start opening more to other countries and the different trade agreements sign up and, and the tendency is that this is going to continue to grow now that we have uh, the free trade agreements with, with Europe, uh, the United States, and currently we're ready to close the free trade agreement with South Korea. Again, so if you see Colombia, you, you see, okay, we have a country with 48 million uh, people. It's the third, lar third largest in Latin America after uh, Brazil and Mexico. But I would say look at, look at it for what it is, for the amount of people that you can reach from those points. Uh, currently, we recently signed uh, what is called the Pacific Alliance, which is basically a trade alliance with uh, Peru, Chile, and Mexico that is going to increase that population into a total of 300 million uh, customers with easy access from, the, from, from one location. And this is what I was talking about of the Pacific Alliance. Um, also in terms of tourism has increased tremendously. Uh, when I first joined uh, ProColombia in 2005, we we're talking at that time and we were, we were having an average of 500,000 tourists a year. And they were saying, no, we need to get it to 2 million. I was like, oh my God, my job is gonna be like impossible. This is gonna be so hard. And it was, it was really hard calling people to try to open the doors. Like I would call, oh, I'm calling from the Colombian trade mission. And they say, oh, I, I don't wanna have anything to do with you. Now, uh, nowadays, it's incredible. I, 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 I have so many calls that, that yeah, exactly. So that's, that's, that's progress. And the fact that I have been able to be here to see that progress is it's, it's very incredible. Uh, last year, we, we closed with a total of four, uh, over 4 million visitors. So that's pretty much double what we originally set up to do. Um, well, I don't want to get into so much of this, but some of the different areas were Definitely, we have a lot of opportunities as manufacturing. A lot of companies in the United States are looking into Colombia <coughs> to open manufacturing operations. Uh, as I said, just the fact that we have different trade agreements with Asia, with uh, Europe, but most importantly with uh, South America, that broadens the access and makes it an interesting country to, to manufacture from. But I would say the most incredible leap that we have taken is in the area of services, BPO, and technology. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, I think you guys have heard of him somehow. <laughs> uh, he was three weeks in Colombia. Three weeks ago, he was in Colombia attending this conference. And it was just a week ago uh, that he got, uh, he, he was in an interview on CNN and he referred to Colombia as the Silicon Valley for Latin America. Uh, truth is, is, incredible things are happening in the technology areas. A lot of companies from the US, a lot of incentive, incentives from, from the government. We have supported financially and, and strategically uh, agencies that we have an agency is called Impulsa that is solely developed, uh, dedicated to develop uh, startups and provide them with all the necessary support starting from financial to business plans. And, and it's definitely a booming, a booming industry and, and, and we're becoming leaders in the region. Um, 
and again, we have plenty of incentives uh, for research and development. Uh, we have free trade zones for uh, manufacturers that around the country where you can allocate and have uh, less income tax uh, charged to, to those companies. Uh, so pretty much that set up my, my, my brief presentation.